Good morning! Today our goal is to investigate drag force and its relationship to speed for a plane that is taking off. Let's press the start button and see what happens. I want you to focus in on two parameters, the acceleration of the plane and the current speed. You'll notice that as the current speed increases, acceleration decreases. and it continues to decrease. And so the question is, what exactly is happening? For an airplane, the two primary forces acting in the horizontal direction are thrust and drag. Thrust is created by the engines of a plane or the propeller. Drag is created by air resistance. Drag holds a plane back. Thrust pushes the plane forward. As long as the thrust force is greater than the drag force, the plane will accelerate forward. However, as the speed increases, drag will increase. This is true not only for airplanes, but Formula One cars, Indy cars, NASCAR, any type of vehicle. As its speed increases, it encounters a greater amount of drag. Eventually, we'll hit a point where the thrust force is equal to the drag force. When we hit that point, we say the plane has hit terminal velocity, or its terminal speed, its maximum speed. Now for a Concorde, this top speed is around 2200 kilometers per hour. So I'm going to show you this with this airplane, where I've increased the drag coefficient. In other words, I've given it on purpose lots of drag. I want you to pay attention again to acceleration and current speed. Now notice acceleration keeps decreasing until it hits exactly zero. Why is that? Well, at the point that it hits zero acceleration, that means that the drag force is exactly equal to the thrust. In other words, for this plane, if the thrust is 200,000 newtons, the drag force is also equal to 200,000 newtons when the acceleration is zero. Let's see what happens when we increase the thrust force. Notice, as the speed increases, acceleration decreases. Why does that happen? Well, remember, as speed increases, drag increases. That means more force is pushing back on the plane. And at this particular point, the thrust force is exactly equal to the drag force when the acceleration is zero. Let's try 400,000 newtons of thrust. See what happens. Same thing. The acceleration will eventually hit zero. Notice, however, because it has more thrust, that speed at which it hits zero is greater. In other words, it has a higher terminal velocity. So our goal today is to complete an experiment with this simulation you'll be assigned a particular plane, either plane A, B, C, D, or E. Please record the mass of the plane and the thrust force. What I'd like you to do is complete this table. Here's our first plane, plane A. In the title of your table, please record the mass. In addition, please record the thrust. So in a moment, I'm going to press the start button you're going to see this plane take off. As the plane is going down the runway, you have to pause the video at those specific values in the table. 15 meters per second, 20 meters per second, 25 meters per second, 30 meters per second, 35 meters per second, and 40 meters per second. As you pause the video near those speeds, please record the acceleration. So here we go. I'm going to press the start button now 
Once again, you'll need to pause the video as you're watching this plane take off. So let's say while you were watching the video a few moments ago and you were trying to record the acceleration for the different speed, let's say you paused the video at 15.2 meters per second instead of 15 meters per second. What do you do? Well, with the video paused, if you're using a computer, you can use the period key to move the video one frame forward at a time. Or you could use the comma key to move the video one frame backward at a time so that you get the precise acceleration at 15.0 meters per second. However, if you're on a mobile device where you don't have a comma key or a period key, then what you can do is you could just change the 15.0 to 15.2 meters per second in the table and then record the acceleration for that. All right, here's the information for plane B. Once again, you have to pause the video to track the acceleration for speed. Here's the information for plane C. As you're watching the plane taxiing down the runway, you will have to pause the video to get the acceleration for the current speed. Here's the information for plane D. As the plane is taking off, you'll have to pause the video to record the acceleration for the particular speed. And here's the information for plane E. Once again, please pause the video as you're watching this plane go down the runway to record the acceleration at the particular speed. Here is the information for plane F. Remember to pause the video at the appropriate speed to record the acceleration. And here is the information for plane G. Plane H. Plane I. And finally, Plane J. Remember to pause the video at the appropriate speed to record the acceleration. So hopefully you've now recorded the information for acceleration for these data points at these different speeds. Now I'd like you to take the data from the previous table and complete some calculations with it. Please note, you will need to fill in the correct unit for the square of speed. The square of speed is just 15 times 15 for the first data point, which is 225, and 20 times 20 for the second data point, which is 400. Drag force is a bit more complicated to determine. For drag force, we'll need an FNET statement. Looking at the diagram, F net will be thrust, subtract drag. According to Newton's second law, F net is always mass times acceleration, MA. And rearranging the formula to solve for drag, drag is equal to thrust, subtract mass times acceleration. So that's the formula we'll use to determine drag. Once you've completed the table, I'd like you to work on this graph. The y-axis will be drag force, 
and the x-axis will be the square of speed. I'd like you to include a professional title, a line of best fit, slope with units and significant digits, and a sentence explaining what the slope means. I hope you understood that as the speed increases, the drag force increases, and hopefully you make the connection between the square of speed and drag force by using the graph. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.